Hello. This time I would like to introduce missionary Horace Underwood. He is a missionary from the Presbyterian Church who entered Joseon for the first time. Underwood is a missionary who came in with missionary Appenzeller through Jemul Popot in Chun on 5th of April 1885. Underwood came to Joseon and saw that no one had been saved. At the time, there was no church, so there was no one who was born again, right? Furthermore, whenever he told them how to take away their suffering, they doubted him, despised him, and persecuted him. So, missionary Underwood prayed to God. It's called the Underwood Prayer. Lord, nothing is feasible at this moment. Lord, you have planted us on this barren and poor land where not even a single tree can grow tall enough. They are just in disbelief and express anger toward us. As we tell them how to take away their suffering, we believe that the day will come when they will rejoice with tears, realizing that they are one with our spirit in Christ. Lord, please hold on to my faith until the end. Holding the Underwood prayer in the heart like this, he wrote and carried it in his heart and evangelized the Joseon people. Look, missionary Underwood had not originally intended to come to Joseon, but he intended to go to India. The reason why he came to Joseon is Jesus appeared in a dream and said, Underwood. Why don't you consider Joseon? When he heard the voice of the Lord and woke up from the dream, he opened the word map and he found the country Joseon, very small, tiny country at the eastern end of the mainland China. So, ah, the Lord prepared Joseon? That's why he finally crossed the Pacific Ocean and entered Jamal Popot in Incheon. What's very interesting is, it was Easter as soon as he arrived at Jamal Popot in Incheon on 8, 5th of April 1885. So he realized that this is the providence of God. Underwood came to Joseon that way. He came to Joseon with such a frustrating heart, so Underwood thought, I need to take a tour of Joseon. He toured Busan, Gwangju, Daejeon, Cheongju, Hanyang, Gaesong, Pyongyang, Shinjiju, Manju. He toured and thought, I have to build a church building here. To please the Lord, he started to plan like this. To do that, he would need a fellow missionary. Thus, he went back to the U.S. and presented the Joseon missionary report. So he reported about his Joseon mission in front of numerous colleagues and co-workers. He said, there are so many lost souls in Joseon. However, there are no workers to harvest. Is there anyone who will go to Joseon with me? Then many young brothers and sisters said, Underwood, I will go. Let's go to Joseon together and preach the gospel. That's why Underwood came back to Joseon again with lots of missionaries. What Underwood did when he came to Joseon was teaching English. So... He established a school, Yoni School, in Yonidong. He called it Yonhi Hakdang. There, he taught English and held the English Bible seminar. Through that, souls were saved and born again. Look, at that time, there was a Korean Bible book in Joseon. So, English Bible and Korean Bible coexisted. 
Those who knew Korean didn't know English, and those who knew English didn't know Korean. That's why Underwood created an English Korean dictionary and a Korean English dictionary. So those who speak English can、uh, learn Korean by searching for English words. Also, those who knew Korean learned English by searching for for Korean words. He started teaching English in this way. Yes, there were souls who were saved. In addition, he opened his house. It's the first Presbyterian church in Korea. The Semunan Church was built. Many lost souls returned to the Lord, and many lost souls were saved through the Semunan Church. And souls saved through this Semunan Church preached the gospel with one heart. And they thought, what else can I do to please the Lord? Missionaries who came with Underwood and brothers and sisters who were saved in Korea evangelized like that. So later, try to add Yeon in Yeonhi School, and Se in Severance Medical College, established by missionary Evison. It's Yeonse. That's how Yeonse University was established. It is the first Christian university in Korea. So, when missionary Underwood came to Joseon, no one was saved. But he eagerly preached the gospel together with a number of fellow missionaries in Joseon. He preached really eagerly. Even he preached when he was on honeymoon. He said, "Oh, we can build a church building here. Ah, we can also build a church building there, like this." So currently, four generation of Underwood family were buried in Yangwajin. First, second, third, fourth generation are all buried in Yangwajin. He also changed his name to Wonduu because he loved Joseon so much. Underwood Wonduu sounds a bit similar, right? The second, third, and fourth generation all have Korean names. So his family name in Korea became Won. Currently, in his fifth generation is Peter Underwood, who is a professor at Yonsei University. From the first generation Underwood missionary to the fifth generation Peter Underwood, all the generations in Underwood family. Came to Joseon and preached the gospel to the end without leaving Korea. This is Underwood family. Look, missionary Underwood has highlighted something for us, which is a fellow worker. Fellow worker, we need a fellow worker. Fellow worker is very important. In the Bible. Among many of the biblical characters, Apostle Paul, around him, there were many co-workers, such as Timothy. As the Bible says, missionary Underwood emphasized co-workers. All we need around us now is a co-worker. We have to work together. To deliver the gospel together and to save souls, but it's difficult to do it alone. The missionary who emphasizes the importance of a coworker to us is Underwood. I will conclude this story about missionary Underwood by telling the prayer of Underwood that he prayed to the Lord when he came to Joseon. Thank you. Lord, nothing is feasible at the moment. Lord, you have planted us on this barren and poor land, where not even a single tree can grow tall enough. It is such a miracle that we could come to this land across the wide Pacific Ocean. Nothing is visible, though 
in this land on which we seem to have been dropped off by your hand. Only stubbornly stained darkness can be seen. Only Joseon people are chained with poverty and superstition can be seen. They don't even know why they are chained. What suffering is, they just in distrust and express anger toward us as we tell them how to take away their suffering, which is not suffering to them. The thoughts of Joseon men are not visible. The mind of this government is not visible. We are afraid that we may not have any more opportunity to see the woman commuting on palanquin. The mind of Joseon is not visible. And we do not see what to do. Yet, Lord, we will obey. We believe that you begin your work as we humbly obey. And that the day will come when our spiritual eyes will see your work. According to your words, faith is being sure of what we hope for and being certain of what we do not see. We believe that we will see the future of the faith of Korea. Although we are as if standing on a desert with our bare hands, although we are condemned to be western devils, we believe that the day will come when they will rejoice with tears, realizing that they are one with our spirit in Christ. And that we all have one kingdom and one Father in heaven. Although there is no church to worship you, no schools to study, although this land is filled with doubt of suspicion, contempt, and disdain, we believe that in the near future this land will become a land of blessing. Lord, please hold on to my faith until the end. Amen.